Well, Stuart, it is now 7.20 in the morning, and when I got up at 5 o'clock this morning, it was already 82, and temperatures are getting up to 105. So let's go through some watering tips when you're trying to keep your garden looking its best in extreme weather. Now, right now, watering is all about survival. It's not about the plants pumping out any more blooms or that much more growth or really even flourishing. It's just about survival until the temps moderate a little bit. So let's start out with my first tip and that's watering container plantings. Now, containers in general are going to need watering far more frequently then your plants in the ground. And the reason for that is pretty obvious. They don't hold the volume of soil to retain the water as well as plants in the ground. Sometimes you might even need to water them twice a day. These, I am making sure that I'm really getting my watering wand, which I find just to be really effective, I'm putting my watering wand down at the base of the plant. I'm not just, in other words, I'm not just going like this, where the water is not really getting down to the root zone. So whether you're watering a plant in a container or you're watering in the ground, you wanna make sure that you water your containers more frequently and that you water them at the root zone. Well, this leads to my question of the day. Number one, and make sure to put your zone, you guys. Where you live, do you have an irrigation system in the ground? Do you do supplemental watering, either with a hose end sprayer, or do you have to do all of it by hand? And if you do it by hand, what is your uh, hose end sprayer tool of choice? I really like these wand sprayers. And I also like them because as I'm moving from location to location, I can water, I can turn it off and not water what doesn't need it so I'm not wasting water. I can turn it back on I can also reduce the tension. And by doing that, if I've got a smaller container and there, oh, there's soil in it or gravel in it that I don't want to dislodge and get all over, say, my dining table or all over the patio, then I can reduce the tension. So that's my question of the day. What kind of watering system do you have and what is your hose end sprayer of choice? Well, my second watering tip is when you're watering, whether it's a container or it's a plant in the ground, you want to make sure that you really soak the root ball 360 degrees. I have made this mistake more than once, particularly with plants in the ground, because I'll water just on one side. And for one reason or another, the soil on the back side doesn't get adequate moisture, and so then the back side is stressed. So whether it's a plant in the ground or in a pot, make sure that you water 360 degrees all the way around the perimeter of the plant. Now, typically we are told to water at the root zone, as I previously mentioned, and to not get too much water on the foliage itself, particularly things that are subject to powdery mildew like phlox or zinnia or your crepe myrtles. But periodically, especially when there's a breeze and if it's at a time of day when the sun isn't at its strongest, right now the sun is low in the sky, it hasn't even broken the horizon yet. So I'm taking this opportunity to really hose down the foliage, not necessarily for watering purposes, but because this is the time of day and the conditions under which I might wanna wet down the foliage to remove any critters like whitefly or spider mite. The other thing is, 
plants like this eggplant that have really broad leaves, they are going to transpire their moisture or lose their moisture much more quickly than something with a smaller leaf. So at the end of the day, if these look really wilted, as will my hydrangeas or my squash, the fact that the leaves are, are just almost looking like they're melted doesn't necessarily mean they need more water. It could just be that they're heat stressed. And in that case, I can just stick my finger down into the soil about an inch deep and see if they have adequate moisture. If they do, then I am not going to water them. They will just recover and look better in the morning. Well, a lot of you have asked about this ground cover that I've got growing back here in the potager. This is Mondo grass, and as you can see, it is really stressed right now. Ideally, it likes to be growing in more shade than it's growing in this situation. However, I have found from experience that it will recover and be fine even though it turns brown. I don't have to clip away any of the dead foliage. I really don't have to do anything except water it because this area does not have any kind of irrigation. There's no drip irrigation as there is in the potager and in this flower bed on the border. There is no, there are no mist heads. There is no supplemental watering uh, system for this section of the garden. So I am going to be very aware of that and during these times when it is not only very, very hot, but we're also getting absolutely no rainfall at all. I'm gonna water this really well, deeply, not necessarily frequently, which is another general tip, because this area doesn't get any irrigation. Likewise, any other areas that you have in your garden that are not irrigated, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you give them some love. Now, again, I'm not really doing this so it will improve the looks. I doubt that until temperatures cool, this is gonna get any less brown or look any better. I am doing this just to ensure its survival. I really love these watering wands. And one of the reasons that I like them is because they have different settings at the source of the water. So I can put it on different settings to get just the kind of watering that I wanna do for that particular plant and that particular situation. In this case, I am using it on full because I really wanna to get to the watering zone the root zone, and I'm doing it at something of a distance because I've got an emerald green arborvita that I recently planted, by recently I mean this season, in the back. And that's another tip. If you have any kind of recently planted shrub, perennial ground cover, and by that, when I say recent, I mean this growing season, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you give them lots of love and lots of water. In this case, again, I'm gonna not do this every day, but I am going to do it periodically based on the weather and I'm gonna do uh, deep but infrequent waterings. If I see that that's not sufficient, I will do deep and more frequent waterings. Now you'll notice right there that in my heavy clay soil, the water is just standing. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that that water seeps all the way down, even though the soil is poorly draining, it will eventually reach the root zone. And then I'll come back and do it again after that water has a chance to sink in. Now again, this relates to foliar watering. Typically, we don't want to do this. But I remember this tip from a friend of mine who is one of the best gardeners I know. And we were in one of these 100 degree spells. And she said sometimes at the end of the day in, light, in late afternoon, when there is no more direct sun hitting the plant, Sometimes, if it's an investment planting that she really doesn't want to lose, she'll come in with her mister and just wet it down gently 
and lightly, not so much to water the plant as to just cool it down. Now, obviously, we want to do our best to, at the outset, plant drought-resistant plants. But, you know, even succulents, even drought-resistant plants, when it's 105 degrees and it's very, very windy, they are going to require more moisture than we would think. So don't ignore any of your plants, like your succulents, your evergreens that are in really large pots like my boxwood over here. Don't assume that because you typically don't have to water them that frequently when conditions aren't so extreme that you aren't going to have to show them some extra love when temperatures uh, go above the century mark. Now here's one of the most effective watering tips that I have discovered for getting plants established, which in my Oklahoma garden sometimes is the biggest challenge. So I've got a lemon cypress here that was growing in a pot and I tried and I thought, oh, I'm just going to experiment and see if I can get it to take off in the ground. So here, is a here are a couple of things. So when I planted it, I made sure that my irrigation guy put a dedicated bubbler head right at the base. So when the water comes out, it goes immediately to the root zone and I can calibrate how much water is coming out by simply turning this screw right here to get either uh, more water or less water coming out from this bubbler head. And you'll notice that it's not a mist head. It doesn't spray the plant itself. It just drips water directly into the root zone. Now here's something else that I am noticing as I'm over in here. You also want to remove in this in these extreme temperatures any kinds of plants that are taking away and stealing moisture from the plants that you have purposefully installed. So in here now that I am down on my hands and knees and I'm back in this area I see not only that there's a few weeds but I see that there is a nasty privet that is starting to grow back in here and it is going to steal some of the moisture from this lemon cypress. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to try to dig out this privet that just volunteered itself in this space. Now we have often heard that in times like this, when the temperatures are just extreme, that we can do some things that will mitigate moisture loss and make our plants happier. And one of those is to mulch our plants. Well, I don't know about you. I try to do that at the beginning of the year, but it doesn't always get done. So I have bags of mulch that are just sitting there and I, I'm not going to spread it because it's simply too hot. What I can do, however, is targeted mulching. So at the beginning, uh, not even at the very beginning of the season, but about two months ago, I planted both or transplanted a hydrangea and a buddleia that were not happy where they were. Now I'm making sure that I'm keeping them well, well watered, but you can see that I also did some targeted mulching. I came in with some really good compost and I put it at the base. Now you'll notice that that hydrangea in the back looks really, really pitiful, but it's still alive. You can see that there's some green growth on it. I'm not going to be too concerned over the fact that it has defoliated and it's lost a lot of its leaves because quite frankly, that's what our trees and our shrubs do to ensure their survival. They're, there's not enough moisture and there's just too much heat for them to really accommodate all of the foliage, all of the leaves, all of the greenery that's on the plant itself. So they start dropping some of their leaves and some of their foliage to ensure their survival. And that's just fine. So if you've got a plant that's doing the same, uh, I had a follower who sent me a picture recently of a holly that had done that. If you have just planted it, let it go ahead and drop all of its leaves. Clean up all of its leaves. Give it some compost. Keep it watered and hope that it begins to recover for, um, for the remainder of the summer and certainly for its lifetime. So that's another tip. Do targeted mulching. 
Now, obviously we don't want to overwater, but I also wanna make sure that my container plantings get adequate water. So it's a matter of being observant, I think. Uh, for example, in my front yard, my window box and all of the container plantings on my front porch, when it's just hot, I just water them every second or third day. But when the temperatures get above 100 degrees, I don't have that luxury and I need to water them more frequently. I also want to make sure that when I do water these plants, again, that I get to all areas of the pot itself and you'll notice that I am also doing this very early in the morning. Now, early in the morning, of course, is relative depending on where you live. It is right now 738, Stuart, and I'm out here bright and early doing my watering, partly because I wanna do it before the heat comes and also before any direct sun is gonna hit any of these leaves. And I also do it because I just wanna prevent moisture loss and I'm gonna lose less moisture if I water now than if I water at high noon. Now obviously sometimes it's a luxury to be able to water in the morning and you can't do it until later in the day and obviously you want to do it wherever whenever you can if the plant is really struggling. Just make sure if you do it at high noon that you don't get much of the foliage wet and if you do it in the later in the day in late afternoon or early evening you want to do it so that there's still enough hours of the day remaining so so that it doesn't go into nightfall with wet foliage that might, um, might increase the chances of some kind of mildew or fungal problems. And here's some final thoughts. As I said earlier, I'm going to really emphasize it again. Don't expect your plants to be putting out a lot of fruit, a lot of vegetables, a lot of flowers because they're just trying to survive. And along those same lines, you don't want to be feeding them right now. You don't want to be feeding your lawn when there's not enough moisture for it to really soak and seep in. You just really want to treat all of your plants very, very tenderly. You might consider putting up some um, supplemental shade, uh, a patio umbrella in a strategic spot, or my favorite thing is I just move all of my containers to a shadier location because I have adequate shade. And that's my final thought, I guess, is let's be thinking about the possibility, the very dire possibility, that these extreme temperatures are not an anomaly, that they are going to persist from year to year, and we have to do whatever we can in plant selection, in good irrigation techniques, good watering techniques to ensure that we pick plants that can really handle and survive the extremes that Mother Nature is throwing at them right now. Well, if you've held on this long, here is your outfit of the day. It's another version of what I'm thinking of as my summer uniform, and that's just a loose dress, a house dress, if you will. And here's my fashion question of the day. Do you have some kind of summer uniform that you tend to wear over and over again during the summer months? For me, this year, it is definitely the house dress. Um, so speaking of the house dress that I have on today, I got at Old Navy years ago go. You can kind of do a fancy thing like this and wear it low over the shoulders or you can wear it up like this. It's a little bit more comfortable this way. But if I'm going out in the evening, I can wear this and it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more elegant and dressed up. My earrings also came, let's see, these came from Target. I got these years ago. They're very, very lightweight and you've seen my sandals before. I got these at Nordstrom Rack. So there you go. There is your outfit du jour.